The lab practical is also known as Part D of the Regents Earth Science exam. It has three stations and you'll have nine minutes to complete each station. The first one is Rock and Mineral ID. The second station is Finding Epicenters. And the third is Elliptical Orbits. It's a good idea to review the rock and mineral characteristics. Igneous rock characteristics are intergrown crystals that you see very visible. Sometimes you'll find gas pockets or air pockets in the rock. That's known as vesicular conditions. These are all characteristics of igneous rocks along with any kind of glassy texture. All characteristics of igneous rocks. Sedimentary rock characteristics include anything that has uh, particles, any kind of sediments that are formed in the rocks that you see. Don't get them confused with crystals. Fossils are also a dead giveaway for sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rock characteristics are more like banding. If you see banding or foliation or any kind of distortions, that's characteristic of metamorphic rocks. Mineral characteristics, do you remember those? Luster, is it metal or metallic luster or not? Here are some examples of metallic luster. Cleavage is how a mineral splits apart. If you see a mineral with a shiny flat side, that's cleavage. Sometimes you'll see the cleavage in uh, parallel layers. Streak is the color of the powder of the mineral. Other characteristics include hardness. Is it harder than glass or softer than glass? Does it scratch it or not? Station 2 is finding epicenters. Seismometers detect vibrations within the earth. The vibrations are recorded on a seismogram and by determining the length of time it takes when you first feel P waves until you first feel S waves, you're able to determine distance to the epicenter. Take that difference in time, go to your time travel graph from your reference tables, match up that distance along the Y axis, put that between the S and P lines, read down to distance, and then you can plot your epicenter. From there you'll need a compass to measure out the distance from the epicenter which is essentially the radius from each of the points where all three intersect is the epicenter of the earthquake. You will be plotting distance to the epicenter for one station. The other two will be drawn in. The third station is elliptical orbits. An ellipse is like an oval. We like to study ellipses because the orbital path of the planets is elliptical. A circle has one center point. An ellipse has two points, two foci. The sun is found at one of the focal points. That's Kepler's first law. Kepler's second law states that the closer a planet is to the Sun, the faster it goes. These two areas in blue represent the same time frame that the planet is traveling in its orbit. The planet is traveling faster when it's near the Sun. When the planet is closer to the Sun, it moves a longer distance and therefore faster. Kepler's third law states that the closer a planet is to the Sun, the faster it orbits around the Sun. So the inner planets go faster than the outer planets. An ellipse is described as having a major axis and a minor axis. You'll be given a distance between foci. Use your push pins along the major axis and push them in at that distance. Place the string around the two foci and draw your ellipse.
Calculate eccentricity. Eccentricity is unitless, and it ranges from 0 to 1. The closer it is to 0, the closer it is to a perfect circle. As eccentricity approaches 1, it becomes more and more oval or elliptical or a straight line. Here are a few thoughts. Remember when you're taking your exam to read the directions carefully and follow them. Round properly. And good luck!